The story's main protagonist, Aya Asakiri, is a shy girl who suffers from depression and who's been bullied her entire life both at school by a group of three classmates and at home by her adoptive brother, Kaname. He would be constantly abused by his father due to the expectations he had to meet for him, and in an attempt to cope with his abuse, he would use his adoptive sister as a mean of taking everything out on someone else. However, Aya constantly blames herself for things she can't control. She took the blame on her rather than her bullies for being bullied, but she also does not hesitate to protect the ones she loves or cares for even if it means risking her life. Months earlier, Aya attempts to put an end to everything by walking in front of the train, but she stops herself. At school, she's bullied by the same three girls in her class. When going home, she visits a stray kitten living under a bridge she's taken care of. At home, she gets abused by her brother Kaname. Once he leaves, her computer lights up and the Maho Show Joe site appears on screen. After calling her unfortunate, it says it will give Aya a magical power, but she turns the computer off and goes to sleep. The next day at school, she finds a toy gun with a heart barrel in her shoe locker. Afterwards, she's bullied by the three girls again, this time with the help of a guy named Shota who wants to take advantage of her. Aya manages to escape but Shota and Erika find her. To make matters worse, Aya finds out that the unfortunate kitten she's been taking care of was killed, and she finally decides to shoot them with a toy gun. To her surprise, it works and the two suddenly disappear. Aya then hears screams. At the train station, Erika and Shota had been run over. Feeling guilty, Aya goes home and stays in her room. The following day after school, another one of the bullies, Serena, attempts revenge at Aya. Serena blames Aya for Erika's and Shota's death. When Serena holds and is about to cut Aya's tongue with a box cutter, time stops. Yatsumira enters the bathroom and slits Serena with the cutter. She then asks Aya to come with her. Yatsumira tells Aya she's also a magical girl and takes her home. She tells her that using her power shortens her lifespan, and that a magical hunter is killing magical girls to steal their magical artifacts and that her friend Rina went missing while investigating him. She also stays all night in Aya's bedroom, protecting her from her brother's abuse. The next day, the hunter attacks Aya, but Yatsumira convinces her to use her weapon. They discover that the hunter is Rina herself. She tells them that she's been killing other magical girls because she wants to survive to the end. Yatsumira forces her to explain, and Rin says that she met the website's manager who told her about a secret page for the countdown to an event called The Tempest that will destroy this world and open the door to a new one. Rina has fallen into a coma. Aya gets the idea to find a magical girl who could heal her so she could tell them what she knows. Yatsumira finds her slaughter notebook, which has photos of other magical girls, and they realize one of them is Nijimi, an idol from the Inui Sobai group. Nijimi invites them to her home. When they discover her power is mind control, and that her best friend, also a magical girl, was killed by Rina. Aya and Yatsumira go to visit Rina at the hospital, where Serena overhears them talking about magical girls. Kanamed, who's getting angsty by being unable to use his sister as punching bag, discovers the magical girl site on her browser's history. Magical girl website manager Nana gives Serena a magical artifact so she can become the next magical hunter, following in Rina's footsteps. Yasumira asks Aya why Serena and her friends bully her, and Aya explains that it's because her social shyness made her unable to thank Serena for her help when she transferred to the school and Serena got angry for it. Yatsumira tells Aya to stop blaming herself for it. Kaname thinks everyone else but him is trash, like his father who hits him when he doesn't get good enough grades. Serena returns to school with revenge in mind. Nijimi temporarily retires from music and transfers to Aya's school. After Yatsumira misses school, Aya goes to her apartment, where she discovers Yatsumira has a man prisoner. She explains that Ma'am killed her parents and promised to return to kill her when she was older. Once she got her magical artifact, she went after him in vengeance. Aya promises an injured Yatsumira that she'll never be alone anymore. Serena appears and tells them that she told Nijimi where to find Rina. Serena wants to kill them in revenge for Erika's death and the nasty scar on her neck, and attacks them, killing the assassin instead. At the hospital, Nijimi can't kill Rina because Yatsumira took the precaution of using two of the magical artifacts as protection, but it's taking a toll on her. Aya and Serena fight, with Aya decided to protect Yatsumira at any cost. Yatsumira's building crashes down, and Aya saves Serena despite all the nasty things she said. Detective Miss Yumi arrives to investigate as the rescue workers find Aya and Yatsumira injured but still alive amidst the ruins thanks to an artifact's protection field. Nijimi works out Aya, and Yatsumira lied to her about Rina. She goes to Aya's home and meets Kaname, a new magical girl, enter Rina's room. Nijimi falls for Kaname at first sight, while an obsessed fan stalks her. Kaname plans on using her to discover more about the magical girl's sight. While Nana observes, Kasama heals Rina by cutting herself. They visit Aya and Yatsumira, which Kasama has also healed. 
Kasama reveals that she's a magical girl from another site of the several that exist and that she wants their help. She shows them the hidden information about the Tempest, which speaks about a king who feeds on humanity's negative energy, and that only the girls who hand out to the website a magical artifact full of negative energy on the day of the Tempest will survive. After realizing they've been lied to, they agree to help Kasama capture an administrator to find out the truth about the Tempest. The website administrators kill several girls who know too much. Later, Yatsumura thanks Aya for having given her another reason to live and Aya's parents agree to allow Yatsumura to stay. Nijimi only agrees to help with the kidnapping if she can kill Rina first. Soon after, Rina appears in their class as a new transfer student and Aya and Yatsumura have to act quickly to prevent Nijimi from killing her. Aya takes Nijimi's magical pants off and Yatsumura runs away and hides them. Aya, Yatsumura, Nijimi, and Rina meet with the girls from the other magical site, Kasame, Kiyoharu, Asahi, Makari, and Suki. Nana warns Serena to mind her own business. Rina also becomes a guest in Aya's house. Kasama calls Aya with disturbing news. The girls go to spend a day in the beach to enjoy themselves a bit, though Aya is worried because Kasama told her Yatsumira doesn't have much life left. Kanaman, who's been told the truth by Nijimi, follows them and steals Nijimi's magical pants from the beach's lockers. Nijimi thinks he stole them for her. Nijimi's obsessed fan is also there to kill Kaname for defiling his Nijimi, but Kaname uses the pants magic to force him to finish himself. Aya sees him but doesn't tell the other girls, though Kiyoharu reads it on her mind on the way back. Detective Misumi is on the case and finds a photo of the stalker with Kaname's name on it. The website managers meet. Their king needs more dark energy for the Tempest. The girls meet at Suki's home. Nijimi finds out Kaname is using the pants and sees his real self. He orders Nijimi to hang herself, but Asahi, controlled by Kiyoharu, saves her. However, due to a previous command, Nijimi tries to strangle Asahi, giving Kaname time to react and order Asahi to kill whoever is controlling her. Kasama tries to heal Kiyoharu's wound, but when her blood isn't enough, Aya uses Kasama's magical artifact to save Kiyoharu. Kaname attacks the girls at Suki's house with a controlled Nijimi in tow. Kiyoharu manages to overcome Kaname's magic and free Nijimi's mind. Nijimi realizes it's all her fault for falling for Kaname's deception and attacks him, but he strikes her with Suki's katana. Nijimi remembers how she got her artifact after her father hanged himself due of the money he owned to a lone shark. She regains consciousness and severely injures Kaname in the neck with a broken crystal bottle. A mysterious, invisible person stops him, but it's too late for Nijimi. Aya feels responsible for Nijimi's death. Yatsumura wonders who saved them and took Kaname away while they were unconscious. Detective Misumi is investigating Kaname's disappearance. Aya starts thinking about the sweet times she spent with Nijimi and starts crying as she wasn't able to save her. Aya reacts and tries to find her magical artifact, but Serena has it. The girls attend Nijimi's funeral. Aya appears and the building explodes. Miss Yumi is revealed as Nana's co-conspirator and the one who took Kaname away. Nana thinks the girls are dead, but Aya transported them away before the explosion. They realize it was a murder attempt by the website managers. Serena is also there, having switched sides. Aya wants the girls to give her their artifacts because she doesn't want anyone else getting hurt. The girls refuse and Yatsumira makes her see reason. Serena gives their magical artifacts back. She reveals Nana ordered her to kill them, but she's fed up with their manipulations. Together they decide to destroy the magical girl's sight. The girls ambush a manager when he comes to give a new girl her magical artifact. Aya, Yatsumura, Rina, and Serena kill the manager who turns out to be a girl. On their way, Asahi, Suki, and Kiyoharu are attacked by another manager. Kasama and Makari arrive. Nana reveals herself, and Makari leaves to help the other girls. Nana destroys Yatsumura's artifact, but Yatsumura protects the others with the barrier artifact, sacrificing herself in the process. On their side, the website managers welcome Yatsumura as a new candidate for manager. The managers reveal to Yatsumura that the king is the most miserable girl in the world, a sorceress that will change the world by causing the tempest, a global storm that will erase evil from the world, but kill those unable to adapt, that is, most of humankind. Aya transports Rina, Serena, and Kasame away. Yatsumura is reborn as a manager candidate and attacks Aya with great strength. Rina and Kasama heal Serena while Makari rescues Suki, who then destroys the admin that attacked them. Aya manages to transport herself and Yatsumura to the beach where, risking her own life, is able to make Yatsumura remember their friendship.
Aya and Yatsumira decide that they're not miserable and defeat Nana. All the magical girls survive. The managers, Aya and Yatsumira's actions have tarnished the king's will by taking responsibility of the evil in people's hearts and claiming that past misfortunes are responsible for today's happiness. Aya and Yatsumira promise themselves that nobody will take their happiness away while the angry king wishes them more misfortune. Thank you guys for watching, Anacaps here and please consider subscribing for future content.